It's the Pioneer Agronomy Update on the Red River Farm Network. I'm Randy Conan, visiting with Donnie Almers from Almers Ag here at Bremen, North Dakota. Donnie, let's, uh, we're, we're here at your plot day. You've got a plot, yep. plot tour plot day coming up the, this evening. Uh, let's talk about what are guys going to see out when we get out into the fields here? Well, we're going to see a couple new products. We've got an 05 in the plot that's new um, and kind of see how some of these products um, performed and, and with, withstood the, uh, obviously, the extreme drought and the extreme heat that we've, we've had, you know. Yep. And this is one of those areas that's kind of the heart of this uh, severe drought, too. It was very bad. Um, if, if, you, if you planted some soybeans or corn or whatever it was on prevented plant ground, it looks pretty good. If you didn't, um, there's a lot of crops that look very, very poor in this area. Yep. Getting close to harvest, what are things looking like? Well, you know, just like everything, they're slightly better than what we anticipated. The, the corn, we're going to have some corn in the area. There's lots of zeros. The soybeans, we're going to have a few soybeans to combine. The dry bean area is going to be really bad. It's, this is not a good area for dry beans this year. They did not handle the drought very well. Yep. How do you, what do you gather from a year like this as far as looking toward next year then? It's really hard because um, when you're under extreme drought, you don't learn a lot from the different hybrids. Um, you know, but if, if we're in an average yield uh, uh, area, you can actually learn some things from the different hybrids and the different varieties. But if it's in a very poor, um, like 50 bushel corn yield environment, you're not learning anything from the corn hybrids. Yeah. Are we going to get that low? Oh, there'll be, there'll be areas where there's absolutely zeros. Yep. Okay, yeah. And then what's the best stuff looking like then? Oh, <laughs> that's really hard, Randy. Um, there'll be some 120, 130 bushel fields, I think, in the area. The, the best fields. Sure. Yep. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's bring in Christy Sundin, the uh, uh, field agronomist here. And Christy, you've got uh, looking at some stock issues here in this corn. And because this crop got pushed so rapidly, uh, we need to be aware of our, our stock quality. Yeah, so obviously with the drought, we're going to have some stock quality issues. Uh, I was out looking at some fields today, uh, definitely some stock quality issues. We've got fusarium that's setting in on some of these. Um, so i got a healthy stock and non-healthy stock right next to each other. It honestly depends on the hybrid, how it was pushed in the drought, how it handled the drought. Uh, the best thing guys can do is go out and walk your fields, do the push test, walk next to them, start pushing on the side. If they start going over, you're going to have to watch those fields. Uh, I don't think guys are going to want to wait till 16 moisture corn. I think they're going to want to start combining at 25. Um, the other thing to watch out for is pollination issues. Uh, so you get into some of these more drought prone areas. Um, we had a lot of pollination issues, you know, so when Donnie was talking some stuff down in the 50s, those fields that we got pollination issues, we're going to have down in the 50s. And big concern is if we have butt pollination issues or shank issues, um, you start pushing on those shanks and they're going to let loose early. Uh, so guys are really going to have to be out there. If they want to save what they do have, they're going to have to be out there early taking it off. Yep. Maybe instead of pushing the shake a little bit first too? Uh, I wouldn't so much shake. I'd do the push test for the stock qualities. And honestly, if your stuff is far enough along, if you're at black layer already and stuff is starting to dry down, just push a little on the butt part of that shank. And if it drops and lets loose, then it's really important that you get out there early and get that off. Sure. Let's talk about uh, sunflowers and where are we at with, with the sunflowers? So most of the sunflowers are at desiccation stage. Some have already been desiccated or some are really close to being desiccated. The more uneven fields uh, haven't been desiccated yet, so we're waiting for some of that stuff to get far enough along. But we've got blackbirds coming in pretty hardcore in a lot of areas. So uh, the earlier guys can get out there, get it desiccated, get it off, probably the better off they're going to be. And soybeans? Uh, soybeans, you know, the soybeans actually look pretty good. You know, obviously we're not gonna know what we have till we get into the field. I'm a little worried about the pod abortion that we had early in the season. You know, you look at the pod like, oh, it's a three beaner. You open up the pod, there's one bean in it. So I don't quite know where we're at when it comes to soybeans. I'm a little concerned about um, the pod quality. So because of the drought, pod qualities aren't gonna be as good. And now we've got these later rains, we probably put on size in the soybeans. So you've got these really big soybeans that are gonna be in these tight little pods. I'm worried that as we get dry, we might have some shattering happening. So some harvest loss. So guys, I think are gonna to have to be willing to dip their combine in, 
to see what the t moisture is and be willing to go out and take it if it's close because I think as we get to maybe the more grasshopper prone areas, the spider mite areas, that's going to be even more important because they'll have done some damage to the pod so there's more likely those could shatter. When you say close, 16? Uh, yeah, I mean anything below 16, but honestly I got a feeling that these are going to look like they're 16, but when you put the combine out there, I'm afraid we're going to be at 12. I just think that things are going to progress faster and dry down faster than what most guys think it's going to happen this year. All right. Any final thoughts here? No, uh, have a safe and happy harvest. I mean, I realize we're probably halfway through. Small grains is done. Uh, I know up north there's still some canola coming off. Uh, dry beans, a lot more disappointment, I think, than excitement out of that. But I got a feeling by next week we're going to see combines rolling on soybeans. So. All right, Christy Sundin with Pioneer. This is the Pioneer Agronomy Update for the Red River Farm Network. I'm Randy Conan.